Alrighty, welcome to a three on three. We've got a challenge here. It's myself, Mac, and Juju Bean battling against Team EU. We've got uh, Fearbina for for Bean. <laughs> it's Anton, Talisker, of course, and the Smasher. Talisker's cast passing to me. I'm passing to the Smasher, and I just opened a recent edition. Yep, it's back. White Plume Adventure. Three mana, three three gets the initiative. Untaps a creature every turn, and. Uh, Kind of backed by popular demand, a lot of the folks I draft with really wanted to try that one out again. We've tried it before. My thought to not include it was I feel like it's the power level leads to kind of like not the best gameplay. But you know what? It's back and I'm going to first pick it. The only thing I don't like here is this does let the Smasher take managing and pass Mac a Force of Will, but I can't pass White Plume. So I'm going to slam Dubs PA and follow it up. Probably with a Misty Rainforest here. Elves into White Plume is great. White Plume into Blue White deck is fine. I mean, it's just a good card. And I think Misty is the best card here. Passing Smasher, if they took Mana Drain, probably take a Time Warp or a Hallowed Fountain. Maybe Arcane Denial if, you know, that's a little bit wild. And then Mac, this is a little tougher. Maybe takes Cauldra if he has a Stoneforge already somehow, or takes the Hallowed Fountain, or maybe takes Bitter Triumph. I don't know. But I'm going to take Misty, passing, I think, Hallowed Fountain, Bitter Triumph, Time Warp, maybe Mox Opal, but probably not. Aragorn, Leyline Binding are among the cards. Maybe College Complete, maybe Fallen Shinobi, I'm not sure. But I think I'm supposed to take Misty Rainforest here. And here, I think I'm going to take Giver of Runes. It's the, a great card to play into White Plume. Just a strong... One of the strongest cards in the pack. There's also Duress and Shieldred's Edict, as well as Iteration, Misdirection, Prismatic Ending. These are all fine, but I think I just take Giver. There's also Chrome Mox. Maybe, I, no, no, no. Actually, I take Chrome Mox, I think. Chrome Mox WPA is also sick. Just playing it on turn two is awesome. And Chrome Mox, I think, is the best card in the pack, actually. So I should just take the Chrome Mox and not, and not worry about the Giver of Runes. This pack has Mana Tithe, which is a solid card. Underground Sea, which goes really nicely with Misty. Hmm. Thieving Skydiver is also a great card. I could just take that. That card is, is very strong. I don't really want to take Mana Tithe here. I think it's not, not strong enough. I'm not sure if White Weenie is open or not. Which, I mean, I can play White Plume in any deck, so that's not that big of a deal. I would take... If this Underground Sea was like a Tundra, I would definitely take that. But I kind of feel like I should try to cut blue a little bit at least. To make it life a little harder for Smasher. So let's just take Thieving Skydiver. Also, this is good in initiative battles. I just think Thieving Skydiver is a very strong card. This pack, oh, Force of Negation. Okay, I'll take Force of Negation over to Fairy and Meticulous Archive. Glad I didn't take Giver. It doesn't look like White's super open. If I take Force, this leaves Teferi, Oliphant, Meticulous Archive, Bone Shards, Misha's Research Desk as the picks. Maybe I get Rafine back. Pretty good chance in Rafine. Rafine would be excellent in this deck. So let, let's keep an eye out for that because I think Rafine Wheeling has a pretty high chance because Mind Collapse and Rexage are also both great cards. Oh, Daze. Daze is the perfect card. Man, if, it's a shame that Hallowed Fountain and Meticulous Archive are already gone because I would really like to get one of those back, but I don't think I'm going to. There is a Brazen Borrower here, and that is a good card too, but I think Daze is, is just disgusting in like a good tempo deck. I really like this start. I did pass, you know, Force of Will and Mana Drain, but at the end of the day, if I can cut blue well enough, though I'm still passing some blue to Smasher. There's been like a Brazen Borrower in this pick. I took, you know, Misty over uh, Time Warp and all that, but I'm still cutting some good blue cards, and then in pack three, I'll be able to do the same. But we'll see, we'll see. Here, Touch the Spirit Realm, Blade Splicer. There's also some good black cards. I'm not taking those. I think Talisker's likely playing red. And I kind of think I just take Blade Splicer here. It's a pretty good aggressive card. And I think I'd rather have that over Touch the Spirit Realm. That one's, that one's close. Time Warp and Arcane Denial both came back. Okay. Sort of Mox Opal, but we're not doing that. I think I'm just going to take Time Warp. I do like Arcane Denial in, a, in these kind of aggro decks, but... Time Warp seems like it would be really good in this deck. Just take an extra turn and you have the initiative, or you just have pressure in play is nice. And I like I like Time Warp with Force Negation. That's actually a really good combo in, in multiple ways. One way 
is that you can uh, tap out for time warp if they counter it. You can't force there, but you can force on their next turn. So it, it makes it a little less risky to tap out there. The other, though, is that time warp pitches to force negation. And time warps are the kind of card that's sometimes really, really strong and sometimes just kind of rots in your hand. So having kind of a buyout when it's weak is, is actually like a pretty significant power level boost. Interesting that Arcane Denial is still there as well. So I'm going to try to figure out what's going on in this draft. I don't think I'm getting any of my blue-white lands back. Um, Prismatic Ending versus Misdirection. I do think Misdirection has some pretty good applications. But Prismatic Ending is also quite strong. So I think I'm just going to take the Prismatic Ending here. And then here, Blue-Black Talisman, uh, Black-White Land. Don't care about Rampaging Raptor, Sedgemore Witch. I think I'll just take the silent clearing here, though I'm not even that stoked about it. Oh, and Rafine did come back. All right, perfect. So I'm going to take Rafine here. And now Drown in the Lock actually looks pretty nice over Sinkhole and Tomb Fortress. Yeah, actually, the silent clearing with the Rafine makes a lot of sense. Rafine is also great to pitch to Chrome Mox. <laughs> it could do all the colors. Which, I mean, look, I'm just looking for ways to use all my cards, and I think that's a pretty decent way to do it. And here... I think here I take Doomsday, because either way, Smasher's getting a decent green card. Now Mac at least gets one too, and I guess I'll hate Sail into the West and Blight Steel. Okay, it doesn't seem like anyone's doing too heavy of artifacts. Pack two. Okay, there's Solitude, Chaos Defiler, Lutri, Time Twister, Skyclave. A lot of good cards. My inclination is just to take Solitude here. Look, Lutri is great, but... I think Solitude, especially with like WPA and, and Rafine and Blade Splicer, like I'd rather just have Solitude. I think Solitude's amazing. Passing Talisker, a Time Twister, a Lutri, a Fast Bond. Chaos Defiler is probably the pick. Or Lutri, I don't know. What's going to come back? Let's see. Chaos Defiler is getting taken. Lutri, Time Twister, Skyclave. Either Zag Zagoth Triumph or Fast Bond. So I will get Vindicate, Dig Through Time, Cut Down are all cards that I'm, I'm likely going to see coming back to me. My first picks have been all white cards. So far, WPA and Solitude. Those are good cards, though. Let's see what uh, the Smashers got for me. And especially with Rafine, by the way, I think the Blade Splicer over Touch the Spirit Realm pick worked out pretty nicely. The Touch the Spirit Realm is nice with Solitude and WPA, for that matter. And here, ah, a bummer. I'm going to have to hate Draft Fury. I think Talisker's playing red, and like the card I want... Oops, the cards I want were Esper Sentinel or Scrubland. One or both might even just come back. I'm just going to hate the Fury. It's not not exciting, but, you know, that's, that's how Team Draft works. Here, there's Unruly Crasis, but I think I'll just take Council's Judgment here. Council's Judgment's a solid card. Would like to work on my mana. Would really like to take a few lands here. The only lands I've seen were, like, the Hallowed Fountain. I mean, I took the Misty, and then there was Hallowed Fountain and Meticulous Archive in packs where I didn't feel like I could take them. But an Underground Sea as well. But I, I feel like uh, I've got a good chance of getting getting some fixing here still, because black-white fixing at least is a little bit lower priority for most people. Oh, wow. Flash. Oh, Carnage Interpreter is a busted card. Wow. But there's also Fire Covenant and Flame Slash. I can't stop any of the red from going through. And I don't think Talisker is playing Flash, but I could be wrong about that, I suppose. I'm just going to take Flooded Strand. I mean, Flooded Strand is exactly what, what I'm looking for here. I think that... I think that this deck's at a spot where it does need the Flooded Strand enough that uh, it's fine to pass all these. And Selfless probably... Well, the reason Selfless wouldn't come back is that there's so many good red cards, which is kind of a beat, uh, that Selfless might not come back. But I'll try to hate whatever red card wheels if the Selfless isn't there. Of note, also seeing very little blue this pack. I think Smasher, at least, and maybe Mac are both playing blue, though I hope Mac... Uh, exited from that, if so. And, I mean, I, I think if I could get a, a duel or two to get with these lands, like if that Scrubland wheels, that'll be huge. I just couldn't pass the Fury there. I don't think that's a very close pick. Oh, wow. This pack has Monastery, Mentor, Ponder, Teferi, Ballista, Loran. All right, finally, there's the white-blue pack. I'm going to take Teferi. Teferi's great. Pitches both to Solitude and Force Negation, and is good with Chrome Mox. And it's just a good card. I don't think... I'm that likely to get Ponder back, but it's possible I get Loren or Mentor back. And 
happy enough passing to fairy and then oh here's a new addition stunt double four mana flash clone kind of interesting um that said i'm probably just going to take jace the mind sculptor i have a chrome mox i have a force integration to protect it and i don't need mystical tutor and i think jace is better than stunt double so ship that and that's pack one let's see what comes back to me all right so vindicate did come back oh wow zagoth triumph and fast bond did too that's interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to take Zagoth Trium. It makes Misty into a black land. It makes Flooded Strand into a blue or into a black land as well. I think I'd, I need that more than I need Vindicate. And also, I think I'm the only one who can play Vindicate, probably. So, though someone took the Scrub Land, so maybe not. It's okay. I'll take Esper Sentinel. I think that's also going to be a good card here. It is a shame that Scrub Land got taken, though. I could have used that. Though I guess the Flooded Strand can't get untapped black now, but it can get Zagoth Triumph, so that helps a little bit at least. And then here, uh, only reason I'm thinking of Unruly Crisis is Talisker does love cards like that. On the other hand, this looks like a really good Wrath deck, so let's just take Wrath. This isn't a beatdown deck. Like, I'll, I'll put Esper Sentinel in my deck and all that, but I actually have a lot of good control elements too, and pack three should be pretty good for me because I think I'll be cutting Smasher well. I'm taking Carnage Interpreter. Honestly... I might try to, to find a way to, to play this card. They, they must not know how good this card is because this card, obscenely good. Um, if you saw my last video, then uh, <laughs> you, you, you will agree. If I get enough black sources, I can do this. We'll see if I get there, but it's going to be a goal for now. All right, Mentor came back, and I think Mentor with Days, Force, Chrome Mox, Prismatic Ending looks pretty good. This deck's also pretty spell-heavy, and... I don't think hating one of the two mana dorks, even though Cobra is generally a little bit better, though that's not even always the case. Some decks would rather have elves. I don't think is necessary. I, I can just take take the mentor and be happy enough with that. And this pack has an invasion of Tarkir. I'm okay passing that. Seder Wayfinder and Lotus Field, whereas I think Stunt Double with a lot of the cards in this in this deck are, are pretty good. Uh, I don't really think Talisker is doing any of that stuff, so I'll just take the land. Guess I have Doomsday. I could take the Oracle. <laughs> what are the odds that Talisker plays Coveted Jewel? I guess I'm not running Doomsday Oracle, so let's just take the Coveted Jewel and Dragon Engine and go to pack three. Oof, this one's a this one's a beat. Pretty much a brick here. I mean, there's balance, but I have kind of a lot of creatures for that. There's Jace Vrin's Prodigy, which is okay here. It's good at casting Time Warp. It's actually pretty good at Wrath. Council's Judgment, maybe Drown, maybe Prismatic Ending. All right. I guess I'm into Jace here. I'm not very excited by it. But I don't think this looks like a especially great balance deck. And I don't really want Toxic Deluge. The good thing is I'm not passing anything all that good either. So I'll just take the Jace and I guess hope to wheel Brainstorm here. All right. Well, Talisker opened something pretty good because he passed a Mana Vault. But I will take the Mana Vault. I'll cast my... Turn two white plume if I can. <laughs> and pass a wooded foothills, a seed shark, a grist, a steam vents. Mana Confluence is probably a card I'd play. Three of Inspector and Sunfall are also cards I'd be kind of interested in. But I'll take the Mana Vault here. I don't even know if I'm playing this Drown in the Lock. Right now I've just got Rafine as black cards, but Rafine is pretty strong. Wow. Okay. Urza and Urza Saga and Tishana's Tidebinder and Wasteland and Godless Shrine and Wandering Emperor. So I guess... I get something back as long as one person takes Llanowar Elves or Burst Lightning or Collective Brutality, so that's nice. The question is, what do I take? Urza? Ooh, Urza Carnage Interpreter? It's actually sick, but uh, I don't have that many artifacts, but Urza is a pretty messed up card. I think it's better than Tidebinder. The question is, is it better than Urza's Saga? Right now in this deck, Urza's Saga gets Mana Vault or Chromox. Those aren't amazing. But... I mean, the land is really nice. It's just, it, you just play it and it's a land. <laughs> like, getting getting the value from that is pretty sick. Huh. Urza Saga versus Urza. Um, this does look like a solid Urza deck. I think I'm just going to take Urza. I also feel like I passed a lot of blue to Smasher. I just think Urza is a really strong card. I, this Carnage Interpreter doesn't look like it's getting in there. I feel like... Urza, especially with like a force negation to protect it. I don't know. That's that's some good stuff. Here, 
Okay, interesting. Passing a good red card. There's Narset and Hero of Bladehold. I'm not super into Narset here. There's also just taking Get Lost. I think I might do that. I think having a nice removal spell is good. I don't think I need Hero of Bladehold that much. Yeah, I think Get Lost is pretty strong. Hoping for another land here. Because right now... Doing fine on playables. Oh, Get Lost also nice with uh, Jace Fringe Prodigy. Just a little bit of extra extra advantage there. I don't think Smash is going to be able to use Inti. I don't care too much about passing Narset. And let's see what we got. Okay, there's Adeline, Troll of Cause of Doom, Novice Inspector, and Upheaval. I have Urza. This actually could be an Upheaval deck. It's really good with Chrome Mox and Mana Vault. I also could take Adeline. I don't have that many two drops for it. There's also Sakarian Infiltrator. I kind of feel like the Sakarian Infiltrator might wheel. This could be. I mean, this could definitely be an upheaval deck. If I draw a Mana Vault, that alone makes upheaval pretty good. But are other people going to be able to use that? Or should I just. I feel like one of Thraven or Novice Inspector has got to come back. There's also Troll of Kaza Doom, but that only gets a, a Zagoth Triumph, so I don't really like that that much. I think I take upheaval here, but I'm like kind of begrudging. All right, now I'm just going to take Sea Chrome Coast. I need some duels. I don't care about passing Dark Ritual, Sarah Paragon. City of Traders would be a nice wheel if it came back, but I've got to take a blue white land <laughs> when there is one there. All right, well, I don't think anyone's brain freezing because the Breach came back, but Brainstorm with Flooded Strand and Misty Rainforest is pretty nice. So I'll pass on a Lion Sash and other nonsense to just take Brainstorm here. Sunfall came back. I'm into that. I think Sunfall will be good in this deck. No Thraven Inspector back for me, but that's okay. So now we're actually at the spot where we need to cut a card or two. I'm definitely cutting Drown in the Lock. I think I'm fine to play Rafine because I have four black sources. Um, but I don't need to put Drown in the Lock in my deck. And this is now 16 land plus Mox. Mana Vault. All right. I mean, this is a pretty solid deck. I don't know about that upheaval pick. It's also a little bit of a defensive pick in case someone else is going to use it. Oh, Wandering Emperor came back, but Godless Shrine didn't. All right, that's fine. I'd actually rather have Wandering Emperor. Yeah, now I kind of wish I took Novice Inspector over upheaval, but I don't know. That's close. I did end up a lot less aggressive than I thought I was going to. And I need to cut a card right now of this stack. I do think Stunt Double is kind of interesting, especially you can evoke Solitude, then stunt, du stunt Double it while it's in play. So for four mana, you get a Solitude in play, and you get to exile two of their things. That's pretty good. You lose two cards, they lose two cards, but you end up with a 3-2 lifelink in play, and it's all at instant speed. There's also cutting like Days or maybe one of the Wraths, but I don't really want to do that. Okay, I'll take care of Blade Hold here. Hero Bladehold is also another card that's pretty good with Mana Vault and Chrome Mox. Just cards that you can cast earlier that uh, are effective. Maybe I take Stunt Double out at that point. Or depending on what my teammates are up to, I could I could cut one of the Wraths. We'll see kind of like what, what our team composition is. All right, and then all these cards, none of them came back that are interesting. I guess I'll cut the Scrap Heap Scrounger... Is there any chance Smasher's on channel? I really don't think so. Oh, City of Traitors. Usher's okay, but this actually looks like a great City of Traitors deck. This That makes me a little happier with the upheaval. And then I'll take... I'm not playing any of these. What is most likely card to get played? I don't think it's even Blood Tithe. I think it's probably Uro. I don't know. And I, I will take Geddon. There's matchups where I would want that card. All right. Interesting draft. Let's see what my teammates are up to here. All right, after making a few cuts, sorry, stunt double. Ah, oh, that upheaval, I kind of wish I took. Well, if I'd taken an inspector, my teammate Mac would have gotten, would have, would, have, would have missed out on it because he ended up playing both. Blue white here, splashing Rafine because it's pretty low cost to do so off of these four lands. And then got Chrome Mox, Mana Vault, Time Warp, some, some good big stuff, Urza. Early White Plume is going to be my whole plan with Days and Force Negation. And uh, I think we're ready to roll. Let's take a look at my teammates' decks. Juju Bean ha has an Ancestral, which he had to pass Soul Ring for in pack two, but a sick Ancestral deck 
with uh, Lelia, Rabblemaster, a bunch of good white creatures, Aragorn, Caves of Chaos Adventure, Goldspan, Bolt, Flame Slash, Spell Pierce, Manatee, then Holy Heat, Reprieve, Dreadhorde, Arcanist for all these one drops. Oh, and a little Ragavan there. So really like JJ's deck. Also great mana. Max got a Lurus deck. I do love that with Mox Ruby, Mox Opal, a bunch of cheap artifacts, a kind of dodgy mana base. You got the Urza Saga, luckily. DT, a bunch of good black cards, duress, some removal. None of the Scrublands, though, which is kind of interesting. All right, let's get to the matches here. All righty, time for round one. I'm going to keep this on the draw against the Smasher. And kind of an interesting hand. I can uh, turn to a Hero of Blade Hold, but it would require me cracking Flooded Strand for a Plains. Not having a blue white duel hurts. It's a little bit here because Flooded Strand is both blue and white, but not at the same time. So hopefully I just draw White Plume Adventure and just play that on turn one. No, but Plains means that I can uh, turn two Hero of Blade Hold if I want to. I don't know that I'm going to want to. Cycle Troll. Okay. It'll kind of depend on what Smasher is doing here. Gets Underground Sea with the Troll. If... Smasher is just playing Underground Sea and passing. Oh, Plains go? Huh. Odd. I think I'm just going to chill here and probably brainstorm. We'll see. Why did we play the Plains? Because our team has Reprieve and Mana Tithe. Oh, Library. Well, that, that I don't like. Let's crack this. Let's get an Island. Cast Brainstorm here. Mm, let's put back, I guess Plains is fine because we're not going to play a Plains this turn. We're going to play Sea Chrome Coast and I think Chrome Mox. And we're going to imprint <sighs> Wrath of God or Prismatic Ending. Um. Just go with the prismatic ending, and then I'm gonna upkeep cast Wandering Emperor. I think actually, oh, remand would be so bad for me. Yeah, let's just upkeep Wandering Emperor here. That way, if Smasher plays something, can't use Library as well. I mean, remand still gets me, but I don't think uh, there's much to do about that. End of turn, I'll make a token. Preacher of the Schism. All right. Let's make a token and then draw. What do I want to do about that Preacher? I think I might just go Council's Judgment. Hold on. Council's Judgment, the Preacher. And then play a planes make another samurai smash and then now putting a good amount of pressure on smasher here it's gonna have to do something I mean the library is strong for sure but but we'll see and then at some point I'll, I'll drop hero blade hold be nice to draw some a little bit of action here Zav Wearer of Faces. Okay. Interesting. Draw. Let's put a plus one, plus one counter on the Samurai. And then hit for three here. And I think I'm going to play City, the Silent Clearing and then play the Hero Blade Hold. Don't, I don't think I want to uh, play the City of Traitors yet. Okay, and pass the turn. So what Smasher can do is attack with Lazav, exile Troll, crack the clue, turn into the Troll, and use that to kill the Wandering Emperor, but that's kind of a lot of resources, mostly mana-wise. Mana so we'll see. I mean, if my Hero of Bladehold is getting killed end of turn, then that would also be not ideal. I didn't want to crack Silent Clearing because I could draw Rafine here. I might crack it next turn if I brick, but all else being equal, I'd kind of rather have it in play. Oh, Brazen Borrower on one of the tokens. Okay. 
Does that mean that this hero blade holds getting dealt with otherwise? Not sure, but Smasher can't use library now unless they attack and use Lazav. Okay, I'll allow that. Would have been nice to keep Prismatic Ending over Wrath of God the way this turned out, because I would have just cast it on Lazav here. So you're gonna exile the troll. And you gotta crack the clue now, yeah. Okay. So boom, it's a troll. You now you get to library too. I can't block. The Wandering Emperor is down. Draw, okay. Don't have an answer to hero? I don't think that's super likely, but it is possible. Toxic Deluge for four? Oh my god, it doesn't kill the Lazav. That's disgusting. All right, well, at least Solitude is pretty good, so I'll just do that now. Solitude the Lazav, but I'm just getting worked by library here. Even a turn three library is pretty good, huh? Okay, and let's see. Land go with losing to library. Mm -hmm. Let's draw and okay. I mean, Jace is pretty good. Let's attack with Solitude first. Not really loving this spot. I need to draw my white plume. Turn one the white plume. Send in solitude. And what do I want to do here? Brazen Borrower is bad. He's seven cards in hand. I think I'm just going to attempt to cast a Jace here. It's going to get mana. Yeah, I, I thought so. All right, let's draw a card of Silent Clearing. Yeah, I'm pretty dead. I mean, I'm not going to literally concede, but I really don't I don't see a path to, to winning this game, really. Library. All right, that, that, that's enough. All right, rough game one there. All right, let's go to sideboarding. So playing against Esper Control, I think that makes me want like Scrap Heap Scrounger and Stunt Double and not want Wrath. I think I might keep Sunfall because Sunfall's still really good. Uh, don't think Drown in the Lock is likely good. Armageddon could actually be good too. Maybe instead of Stunt Double. Yeah, I kind of like that. And maybe I just at that point do cut Sunfall. I'll blow up all the lands instead. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll try that. All right, I would like to play first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to run this hand. But the way I see it is if I draw a Plains and I have a turn two White Plume with Force Backup, I'm just going to straight up win. If I draw an Island, I can play an Urza on turn two. It's also great. If I miss on lands, then it's a little vulnerable, but I think with a Force of Negation, I think this hand is just to keep. All right, let's go Island Vault. Pass. Okay, that's not a library at least. Right, any planes? Any planes? Mm -hmm. Boom. Oh, that's a planes. No big deal. White Plume Adventure. Let's get in there. And I think here, I think I'm actually going to get a planes because I'm more likely to pitch. Or is it a force of negation then cast it? So I think I'd rather get a planes in order to cast a hero of blade hold. Either way, I might draw another land when I hit four. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's pretty close. But the the tiebreaker for me is that I'm gonna pitch Urza to cast force of negation. I think under in in many of the the games here, including this one. And then draw, let's go to forge here. 
we're just gonna go beat downs. Okay, well, <laughs> now any land would be great. I mean, depending on what Smasher has, I also might not need the land. We'll see. Another swamp. Okay, Preacher. Well, that's not gonna do it. Get lost, please. Draw and uh, get a trap here. I mean, this is why WPA was so strong. <laughs> a three mana, although I guess in this case, I, I could have cast a five mana card. Oh, I should have got an island. Mm, yeah, I can cast this because Toxic Deluge is not an out because my opponent can't pay five life. Also, if they had Toxic Deluge, Deluge they would have cast it over Preacher, I would imagine. And I think we're going to be on to game three momentarily here. It's going to be pretty hard to, to imagine Smasher getting out of this one. It is possible, but seems seems pretty unlikely. All right, we got game two. Okay, on the draw, do I want Armageddon, Stunt Double, Wrath of God? Maybe I'm just going to take out Scrap Heaps Grinder for Stunt Double. We'll do that way. All right. Let's get it. All right, can I get a turn one? <laughs> white Plume, City of Traders, Chrome Mox, White Plume. Eh, there's City of Traders. I mean, this hand I think is fine. I'm going to go Misty into Zagoth Triome. Play Jace on two. Opponent's mulliganing, so no, no turn one library for you. And then we'll see from there. I have, I have good mana. I have a stunt double if I need it. All right. Oh, or I just draw that. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll play Zagoth Triumph. The only thing is if I do draw White Plume, I would have wished I, I led with a, a White Source, but I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Okay. Troll for Godless Shrine. Tapped? No. I would much prefer it be tapped. Well. Collective Brutality. All right, that takes my Council's Judgment. It's a shame. It almost missed. Not land, please? All right, well, I really want this Jace to live, because if I don't, Jace doesn't live, my hand is garbage. True name nemesis, okay. Well, let's loot. That's not gonna do a whole lot for me. Discard island. And I think I'm just gonna play a stunt double now. Make a true name. So I'm a little behind, but I think I got to do that. Don't really have a choice. Take some damage. All right, Smasher doesn't have another place. Thieving Skydiver. All right. Let's send. And I think I'm just going to loot now because I don't really want to flip Jace yet, though I will when, I, when there's Council's Judgment to come. Oh, I see. I definitely could have done that the other way, but uh, that's fine. I'm going to discard planes and I'll cast Thieving Skydiver. Let's see if this gets countered. No, and then I'm going to play Misty and lose the uh, City of Traitors. I think that's okay too. Pass the turn. Well, now I'm winning the race. So Smasher's going to have to do something. They might fire off a Toxic Deluge. If that's the case, that's the case. I would like them to tap out for something here. That would be nice too. That isn't Deluge. No, this is a Deluge. All right. Let's crack this and just get a land. I guess I can just get Island, I think. All right. Draw. Oh, Blade Splicer's nice. Let's let's lead on Blade Splicer, because I think Rafine post Blade Splicer is gonna be a lot stronger. Okay. Pass the turn. They have three cards in hand. Let's see what you got. Loran killing the go the golem. Okay. It's acceptable, I guess. Let's just draw. Oh, Time Warp is actually not too bad. So let's go Rafine. Attack with Blade Splicer. 
discard prismatic ending. I would imagine Loran's going to trade here, but it's possible they don't. And then I would hope that I don't have to use the force of negation this turn. If I have to, I will, of course. And then Rafine can maybe do some good work. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to use force of negation here. I don't think keeping time warp force negation is going to be as good as countering. Oh, no. Oh, swords to plowshares. All right. Fair. All right. Time to draw Urza or white plume or hero. Oh, that's a white plume. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Two cards in hand. Let's hope they're not good ones. Okay, and now I don't really see a reason not to play my land. I, I've gone through all my discard effects. Let's pass. White Plume does whatever. Does White Plume things. All right, Smasher, no, no plays. Just one turn of no plays. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go to Forge, but I'll have to see. Because if I'm going to Scry, I'll crack the Flooded Strand in response just there's no reason to scry with a Flooded Strand in play, because if I have to crack it, I'd shuffle away my cards, like if I put two on top, for example. But there's a good chance I want to just go go forward, attack for five, you know, go for the win in two turns or whatever. Okay, Smasher's tanking. That, that, that could be valuable. Really close game here. This one's a, this is an important one. I have no cards. The Smasher's got three, but I have White Plume in play. And we don't have something we're slamming right now. Hoping to draw Urza, Hero of Bladehold, the Wandering Emperor. Wandering Emperor would be, like, amazing. Yeah, maybe, maybe it is the play is to scry here. Certainly, certainly a possibility. All right, Land Lazov. Okay. So Lazav can become a stunt double, but it doesn't... No, that doesn't do anything. It can become a true name until every time it attacks, or a troll. Hmm. I kind of feel like I'm supposed to crack Strand here. I have white, white, blue, 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 so I guess I'll get a white. And I think I'm going to go to the Lost Well. I think that's better. And try to find a removal spell for this turn. Okay, Teferi Geddon. Mm, I'll put Geddon on the bottom, I think. Though it does make Lazav a lot weaker, actually. Let's... I could also just Geddon this turn. Because this untaps every turn. Attack you down to 10. Hold on. I guess playing a land is the reason not to, or Geddon is the reason not to play a land. I mean, let's see. If I get, assuming Smasher has nothing, obviously if Smasher has a removal spell, I just lose. But let's see. If I get in here, attack Smasher down to 10, untap White Plume, Smasher goes land. Next turn, I get to stash, attack you down to 7, go. Smasher can then, if they've drawn land, land. Attack with Lazav, turn it into like a troll. I go to seven. They go to forge. I attack back. Or they would go to the first one. I, I attack back, you go to four, and I make a catacombs token. And then a smasher can attack for another six, but then lose. This is really close. If I Teferi, the, the risk with Teferi, I get three more damage in, but the risk with Teferi here is that uh, Smasher finds another play next turn. Let's see, they're at 13. Again, attack you down to 10, untap. You also have to have two lands in a row to even do something. I'm just going to go for it, I think. Or rather, I'm going to attack first and see what happens. Okay. Well, let's do it. 
Armageddon you. All right. Untap my white plume. <laughs> Let's go. I think even land land doesn't doesn't lose me the game though. Cause now now Smasher draws land, hit you down to seven. Ooh, let's untap this thing. So and if they don't have land here, the game just ends. Oh, that is it. Well, that is it. Draw. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to the arena. I'm going to goad Lazav. <laughs> Smash. I mean, you can block if you want. Untap this. <laughs> Get in here, Lazav. Uh, I have not used the goad function very much, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this this actually worked out pretty well. I'm not, I'm not casting another spell this game. I don't think I need to to do anything. All right, I'll block. White plume adventure, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's go to the catacombs, and oh, I mean. Solitude's a strong card to draw in this situation. Not that it matters. Hit you down to four. And uh, at this point, I don't really foresee a card that can that can change the outcome of this game. Whew, White Plume untapping itself was such a big game. That was that was really something. All right, time for round two against Talisker. I am going to keep this hand. Talisker's on Lutri with Flash. Flash is a dangerous one, but this hand is totally solid. Plus, uh, ooh, Mana Vault's a nice draw. Might just turn to Jace here. Plus, this having Force of Negation against Flash is pretty nice. Won't necessarily stop it, but definitely has the ability to do so. Okay. Any blue sources? No. I guess we'll just pass here. I don't think I, I... He's got him to Turok in his deck, so I'm just going to wait on the Brainstorm, I think. Mm. He is playing blue, so... A little Grixis deck. Oh, and apparently Besage you. Oddly enough. All right, uh, let's fire off... I have the Skydiver to pitch to Force Negation, so I'm just going to fire off the Brainstorm here. <sighs> okay, didn't get Brainstorm locked. That's all that I'm worried about. Um... Next turn, I think, let me see. So he didn't put Lutri in hand, which is interesting. I think I'm just gonna play Jace. And I think given that, actually, I wanna put Urza back on the bottom. And then I can pitch Rafine or Thieving Skydiver to the uh, Force of Negation if I'm obliged to use it. And I didn't see anything that could kill Jace that was burned, so I think I'm just going to brainstorm here. Mm -hmm. Draw. Oh, Daze is nice. Um, let's put back Land and Urza, I think, and then pass the turn. And I've got Daze up. I've got Force Negation up. I feel pretty good about this situation. He didn't put Lutri into hand, so what's he going to do here? Oh, this is a bitter triumph. Okay. That I'm okay with. I can't daze it. I can't force on my turn, so, you know, what are you going to do? He chose to discard Gruff Triplets because he's probably got a reanimation. Uh, I'm going to pitch the Thieving Skydiver here, I think. I don't think Thieving Skydiver is that great against him. And... I think Daze has a pretty decent shot of being good, and Rafine will be really strong if I draw a black source. So let's just do it this way. And I don't think I want to just play the Chrome Mox. I don't mind returning a land to cast Daze, and I have Rafine in hand. Because I could play Mox, not imprint anything, and use it to cast Daze alongside the construct. But I feel like I would rather just... Uh, Return a land, because if I draw a black source, all right, that can't be countered, so it's just dead. If I draw a black source, then uh, 
I can cast Rafine, and having Mox in hand a discard, it's just like another card. Okay, play Chandra, tapping out. Play something, tapping out. I mean, I'm up a card. I'm up... Well, I'm not really up a card here. <sighs> this is annoying. Yeah. Because I guess I'll pay the, pay the four. Because I know I'm drawing a planes here. Pass the turn. Basically, I went down one from Force, up one from Brainstorm. He's down one because he discarded to thing. Oh, man, and I can't daze that. What a draw. He drew that off the top. He would have had a Lutri in hand. Or, or he wouldn't have put Lutri in hand if that was the case. All right, can I get a little bit of action here? That's like an extremely small amount of action, but I guess it plays. Okay, I passed the turn. Basically, I'm up some cards because he had to, all his removal was two for ones. In fact, the long goodbye even killed a free card. But the uh, fable here is a pretty big game. Okay, get lost that thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I can end up in a spot where he goes for like a double Lutri spell tapping out, and I can daze one of the things. That could be that could be pretty nice. Okay, no plays. All right. Hero Blade Hold, something like that. White Plume Adventure. Unfortunately, I don't have a Swamp I can go get. I don't think I'm supposed to play a Swamp in this deck, but it would be good in this exact situation. <laughs> okay. Let's just get a Plains. And... I think I'll play the land. I have enough to discard to Rafine at this point that I don't mind just playing the land here. If he's got no play end of turn, that would be pretty nice. End of turn, Corpse Dance, the Woodfall Primus. Okay. Blow up an island, sure. So he does get to attack and take the initiative. I just need to draw a black source that's not Zagoth. I need to draw exactly Silent Clearing, actually. <laughs> if he has a way to sacrifice the Woodfall Primus, it's going to be really bad for me because then he gets to keep it. But as is, it's going to get exiled to uh, the Corpse Dance here. Really a shame that at no point was I able to use Daze this game. Like, I feel like with the interactions we've had, I should have been up a fair amount. Because I was, card-wise, but I drew two bricks, three bricks, really. And he had a fable. He had a companion. Lutri is good, though I guess he hasn't used it yet. Okay, there's an island. I guess I just drew slightly too... I guess he was also on four lands the whole time, and I was on, like, six or seven, so... Revealed Shieldred the Apocalypse. Probably keeping that one on top. Okay, it's a 4-4 four, four now, that's fine. Can't cast Lutri now? Huh. All right. Let's go Silent Clearing. If I do that, that would be really sick. No, he's going to do some casting. K command. All right, that I will daze. Don't want Gruff Triplets coming back to hand. And the funny thing is, actually, Silent Clearing doesn't cast the Rafines. So really what I want to draw is Council's Judgment. That would be that would be ideal. Wandering Emperor would also be sick, because then he has to block, and then I go plus one in first strike here. So that would be awesome, too. So I've got some good outs here. I just need to draw one of them. I need to, I need to, sp to spike something decent here. Let's go. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Action. Oh, that is painful. That is painful. Um, I guess I'll do this and pass. And now I don't like my spot at all. He's got Lutri in hand. He's going to get to go to the Undercity here. 
I mean, Council's Judgment and Wandering Emperor are still great draws, especially if the, the reflection is just getting buffed here. Yeah, I'll take my six, go to seven. I don't like that. <laughs> but at least I go to one, go to six off the silent clearing, so I'm not quite dead. Oh, shielded, right. Yeah. I mean, I do have outs. Mostly Council's Judgment. City of Traders is not going to be it. Uh, Rafine. Attack. Rafine. Concede. All right. It ended up not being super close. Oof. I would have even not gotten there on the Rafine quite there. But all right. Down a game here. Uh, going to game two. I definitely want stunt double against the reanimator deck. Drown the lock doesn't seem good. I could put a drown lock and swamp. I didn't really see anything to thieving skydive. I think I like the rest of the stuff. Days is good even if he knows about it. It's just a good card. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could take out planes for a swamp, but. I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want upheaval either. All right, I'm on the play here. Just once a turn one white plume. Let's see what we got. Talish has got a Lutri. I have a great hand. Turn one Esper Sentinel. Turn two Brainstorm. And then turn three likely white plume. But we'll see what the draw is. City of Traders would be just an off-the-wall good draw here. Again, he's got him to Turok, so I'm just going to play my island and say go. And hope there's a land in the top three cards, huh? <laughs> oh, turn two Mana Confluence. That's aggressive. Okay. Brainstorm. Okay, we hit the land. I think I want Jace the least. I'll shuffle that one away. I'll keep the silent clearing here. Send with the Esper Sentinel. Not that he's going to play a removal spell on that, I don't think. But you never know. He might. And then I'm going to go White Plume, get an island, and then kind of have all the all the spells we need there. Hopefully. What you got, Talascarino? Okay, takes one. White plume. And get me an island. And maybe he goes like Bitter Reunion, discard a card. Oh, long goodbye. All right, that's fine. Oh, I draw the cards. I don't even get to shuffle. <laughs> it's all right. Jace is fine. And hopefully no haster. Oath of Druids. All right. And he gets to pay. Oh, he didn't pay. Huh. Um, I'm going to go forge. I don't need to do anything else here. Forge. I'm going to attack here and probably get killed, but then I draw another card. So uh, also, if he, if he kills it, then the Oath of Druids turns off. Not that... Uh, not that I wouldn't be able to play another creature. Okay. Council's Judgment. Get that Oath of Druids out of here. And pass the turn. I don't think there's any reason to take the risk of playing Hero and letting Talisker Oath. That seems <laughs> eminently foolish. All right. Crack Strand. So he's probably going to kill the uh, Esper Sentinel at this point. I think I'm okay with that because I will draw a card off it because that's percent no keys off power. So he has to pay three more if he wants to do something with it. All right. Let's send with Esper Sentinel. See if Talisker wants to go to five. Probably doesn't. Okay, command. I discard a card. Sure. I will gladly do so. And I think I'm just going to go Urza Jace just to play two things this turn. Seems a lot better. And I guess discard an island. Most likely here. 
Yeah, because I have a lot of blue sources from Urza. All right. Land. Urza. And Jace Vryn's Prodigy, which means that counsels judgments on the menu as well. And then now, I mean, I guess he could like through the breach something. That would be like one of the ways to come back, but I feel like I would still probably be fine here. Relic of Sauron. Oh yeah, that's a new addition that I like. Taps for blue, black, and red mana. Two, two of it. And you can use it as a big looting thing. Bitter Triumph on my Jace. Really scared of that Council's Judgment, I guess. All right, well, I just get to draw a card now. And now I'm definitely going to keep up Wandering Emperor, though. I guess I don't have enough white. What I think I can do... I'm just going to attack for one and then play Monastery Mentor and then have Wandering Emperor up using the, the Construct token to pay for it. So I think that's going to be good. And then now there's just really no way he can he can get me here. I'm going to get to go to the Throne of the Dead 3. And from there, I assume it's going to be lethal. Draw two and discard one. Yeah, that's that's not going to do it. All right, game three on the draw here, huh? Okay. Um, thieving side ever to steal that thing? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't think I will. Um, drown in the lock. I think all the wraths are still pretty good. Get lost. You can kill the Oath of Druids too. I have a couple ways to kill Oath. I have Prismatic Ending too. I have a lot of ways to kill Oath. All right. City of Traders, Crow Mox, White Plume Adventure. Let's go. Let's see what Talisker is up to here. Oh, well, that's close. I'll keep Talisker's mulling, and I'm going to go Sea Chrome Coast Mana Vault into White Plume. Maybe Prismatic Ending a, a one drop, but <laughs> that, that's, I think, a little less likely. If he plays turn two Oath, I can Prismatic Ending it. Though it's kind of tough to play Oath before any creatures are out, because then I just get to wait. I mean, that does slow me down, but it's always a risk. It's part of the reason Oath of Druid is a tough card to, to manage, as <laughs> as we saw in my one of my recent drafts. Oh, Solitude. I like that one. He didn't really seem to have a lot of ways to kill Mana Vault, besides Kolagon's Command, which he can't play on turn two. So, I think I'm fine just playing it out. Really hope I don't get him Turok here. I guess if I get hymned, I have a there's, a... there's a chance that White Plume, two out of six, that White Plume gets hit. Okay, no him, please. Oath of Druids. He did run out the Oath early. All right, well, unfortunately, I can't play White Plume and Prismatic Ending. Or Urza and... Uh, Prismatic ending, but I will just prismatic ending the oath. Pay two here. I'm to five, so it's going to be pretty hard for for him to to win a game where I get to oath. Or I, I kill the oath. Show and tell. Okay. I'll put a solitude in, I guess. Okay. And then I'm going to go Urza plus White Plume. Pretty decent, I would say. Pretty decent indeed. Oh, show and tell an oath of druids. We're on. We're on the all misers plan, huh? <laughs> I like it. All right, Urza. Oh, but wait, there's more. White plume and get a planes. Smash for three. Good games and good luck. I mean, he's got one card in hand. He's at, he's at a million life thanks to uh, <laughs> thanks to the uh, Kozilek getting solituded. But oh, I guess I could have untapped the construct to tap for mana. <laughs> seems seems unnecessary. I'm just gonna put Lutri in hand if nothing else. Okay, and then here, I'm just gonna go forge here. We're we're getting in. Okay, so let's go forge. I think I just want to make the Solitude buff. I'm not going to untap the Mana Vault. And then here, oh, Teferi too. Jeez. All right. Let's go Teferi so you can't play anything at instant speed. Esper Sentinel plus one Teferi. 
send. Wow, this makes my deck look really good. Maybe my deck is gas. I'm about to be 2-0, so that certainly helps. Untap the solitude now. And uh, it's going to need a hell of a through the breach. And he does not have it. Boom. All right, I'm on the draw against uh, Fierbeina here. Anton on Jund Soul Ring. The, the, the Soul Ring DJ passed. He has put to good use with Minsk and Boo, Death Greeters Champion, J Broadside Pombardiers. Just a lot of great cards. I have to mulligan this hand because I no white mana. I mean, I guess I got to keep this. And I think I just put Monastery Mentor back. It doesn't look like that's going to do a whole lot. I don't think this is a very good draw, but I think the Wraths are fantastic against him. Oh, Chromox actually is a really nice one. Okay. Because now I can go turn two Blade Splicer and potentially uh, turn three Emperor or L L Urza. I guess I'll have to see what I draw. Well, he didn't open on Soul Ring. I hope his turn is to pump the Hex Drinker twice here. All right. All right, all right, all right. Flooded Strand, okay. Um, I think I'm gonna imprint Sunfall here. I think I'm the one who's gonna be, I'm, I think I'll be the one who knocks. <laughs> so let's just imprint the Wrath, play turn two Splicer. Now if he pumps the Hex Drinker up, I can just double block if I wanted to. That's a Wasteland. That doesn't do too much against me. Okay, draw. Oh, all right. Now I'll allow the Tireless Tracker for the moment. It's not like I can kill it right now. Let's go Urza. And then I'm just going to play the Jace here, tapping my two Golems here. And I'll give him the opportunity to do some attacks if he wants. Just using my mana so nicely is good. And he played Wasteland, so he might not have another land in hand. Unless he's like saving a fetch land, that could be the case. All right, just no red mana yet, so really don't mind this too much. Just gonna draw a card to see his options, maybe. Yeah, and then pump Hex Drinker, and then I get to maybe make some attacks. He's gonna take, if he hits me for eight. Hmm. I think that's acceptable. And I'll just, yeah, I'll just Wandering Emperor the Hex Drinker. Draw. Let's draw with Jace. Oh yeah, Daze, Daze is gonna be potentially great here. Wandering Emperor. Kill the Hex Drinker. And I think I'm just smashing for seven here and then planning on chumping the tireless tracker and I have days which I'm not saying is like gonna stop everything but there are definitely times when days could be really good here mm -hmm. and I feel like my life total is not under that much threat I don't want to see a red source a red source would be would be tough um, but if, he, if I can successfully daze something this turn, I'm pretty sure I just win. Even if I don't, I feel like I have a pretty significant advantage here. I could have left Urza or one of the golems back, or both the golems back, but I feel like if he kills Blade Splicer, then attacks with Tracker and kills Wandering Emperor, I'm still fine, because then I have a Jace to block and flip if I want to. Okay, he has the red. It's a shame, because now he could play Minsk and Boo, and I couldn't daze it. But we'll have to see what the play ends up being. Broadside Bombardiers would also be pretty annoying. That card is really messed up. Yeah, I can't daze it. So that can kill... Attack and kill Wandering Emperor. And he can throw a clue to kill Blade Splicer if he wants. Attack. Yeah, Broad Bombardiers is still really good here. It's incredible. And now he can throw the clue at my Jace, I guess. He's also threatening to throw a tracker at me. I'm gonna I'm gonna block the tracker with Blade Splicer here. Or he throws the clue at the Blade Splicer, and I go to seven. 
Oh, he's gonna throw the clue at the Jace. It's gonna pump the tracker. Okay. I will block to save five damage and hopefully he doesn't have anything else. Okay, nothing else. Removal spell, oh, White Plume Adventurer. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So let's cast White Plume. I've got double white. I mean, I'll just get another planes, I think. So I get to untap something. So I think maybe I just attack for three and then I get to untap. I think that works out. Upkeep, white plume goes on the stack, untap the Frexian Golem. <sighs> yeah, Bombardiers being able to kill Wandering Emperor and Jace there was, was a pretty big swing. I'm once again asking for me to get today's something here, but at least I have a lot of blockers for Bombardiers now. I have three different 3-3s three that can block it, not counting the even counting the Urza. So he can throw something at one of them, but that still leaves two. And maybe I take a hit from the tracker or something, but we'll have to see. If he's got a good play this turn, I could definitely lose. Knight of Autumn. Okay. Oh, that kills two of my things. Well, I still get to block with Urza plus White Plume on the Bombardiers if I want. I really need this daze to work. Yeah, he killed the right golem. So now there are two twos. So I guess he can, is he really not? Okay, I am gonna get to daze that at least. So now he can throw, he can attack me with both and throw Knight of Autumn at the White Plume. And then he becomes the Monarch. Oh, he's just gonna attack with Tireless Tracker? Hmm. Then he can't throw anything. No, he's got to attack with both. Okay. Wow, Broadside Bombardiers is really a beating. So now, I mean, this is still close. We'll see what he throws the Knight of Autumn at. I assume he's going to throw before blocks. Otherwise, I'll double block Broadside Bombardiers with White Plume and Urza. Oh, maybe that doesn't work, actually, because then he can just throw the token... Man, Knight of Autumn. He had... Basically, he had a, a kill spell plus a permanent all, all rolled up into one. So that is tough. Okay, so Urza down. All right, well, now I think it's like kind of a forced play. Double block the Bombardiers. Take five. Go to six. I lose my Construct. But he gets the... Take the Monarch. He goes and gets a Swamp or something. Play a swamp, get a tracker token. Okay. Well, if I draw something good here. Hmm. Wrath of God's interesting. It's got three cards. I mean, I'm going to attack and take back Monarch. And I don't think Forge works. I think Lost Well is, okay, is better. Let's see here. Uh, no, no on those two. And I'm going to take slightly riskier line because I get to untap White Plume. So now I'm going to block with the White Plume. Hope he plays another creature. If he plays a Haster or plays a removal spell, then yeah, I lose. But it's not like Wrathing down to nothing. Like I would lose to a Haster there anyway. I guess I don't lose to a removal spell. But I think it's so much more likely that he's going to play uh, just another creature. I just think that's a better... I, get, I have a better chance of winning the game by doing that. So I'm going to do what I can. <sighs> this game was tough. It felt like I was doing well because you didn't have red mana for a while, but Prodside Bombardiers, just what a card. Just an unbelievable card. I mean, it, it it basically soloed me. Like, obviously the tracker was good and all that, but Bombardiers did so much work. Okay. Turned out I was dead no matter what. Okay. Going to game two. Definitely want all the Wraths. 
I once again actually think Stunt Double could be pretty sick here. Mm. I think Days is still good, especially on the play. I think all the Wraths are good. I think Rafine is good. It's a little worse against uh, Wasteland having Rafine in the deck, because without the Wasteland, or without the Rafine, I could take out a non-basic, but that's okay. Force of Negation, I might just take that out. It counters Minsk and Boo, and that is really good, but it doesn't counter anything else. He's got all creatures in deck. I feel like that's a little bit too risky. All right, on the play here. See what we got. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a keepable hand. I, I actually wonder if I should have just taken Esper Sentinel out too. That's kind of hard because Sentinel, when you're on your opening hand, it's pretty good. It just randomly messes them up. Like if he has Soul Ring in his opener here, he has to like wait a turn or give me a card. I don't know. Turn two, I, I'll probably go get Zagoth Triumph with Misty Rainforest. And then I have Council's Judgment into Wandering Emperor, which is okay. All right, I guess I won't attack here. Just pass. Council's Judgment is a pretty good answer to Hex Drinker. And I'm not attacking because I don't want to trade one for two, of course. Scrubland, okay. Oh, there's the Soul Ring. Is he going to pay the one? Okay. So what I might do here is he's going to pump Hex Drinker twice. I think I'm going to Council his Judgment the Soul Ring. And then if he pumps Hex Drinker and attacks I, next turn, I can uh, Wandering Emperor him. Let's get Zagoth Triumph. Draw. I mean, Thieving Skydiver would have been such a sick draw there. Wrath makes it even more that I want to kill the Soul Ring. Though... Uh, that Esper Sentinel did stop him from playing Soul Ring turn one or making Hex Drinker a 4 4 on turn two. I think that was already pretty decent. I'm just going to pass. I'm trading one point of damage to force him to use Hex Drinker if he wants to attack. I think that that's worth it because he might want to play a three drop this turn, in which case I traded one for two. I don't know. It's pretty close, but I kind of feel. Oh, then there's that. All right. That's fine. That is fine. Mm. Play a planes. I'm just gonna pass the turn because if he pumps hex drinker and attacks, I'll wandering emperor it. If he just like plays around wandering emperor, I could just uh, wrath of god on my turn. He might might play another creature or something. I don't know. We'll have to see what the plan is here. Mm. Also, if he attacks without pumping Hex Drinker, I might just play Wandering Emperor and make a token and block. That also sounds pretty good. So I feel like I feel like I'm in pretty good shape here. I've got I need to draw some action. I'm pretty action light, but so far uh, he does have the red as it turns out. If he has Minsk and Boo here, uh, I mean, is he really gonna play it in today's? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay. I guess I lose. Nothing much I can do about that. Mm. Like, I can play Wandering Emperor and make a token, but that really does so little for me. If it was one bigger, I could kill Minsk and Boo. Mm-hmm. Play the Minsk right into days, which is a good play. Not everyone would do that, but you know, you just gotta kinda sometimes you just gotta hope they don't have it. Alright. What's my line here? I can wandering emperor and kill Boo, but that just really doesn't do much for me. Um can kill Hex Drinker and then kill Boo. I can take eight, make this a token. Attack, Minsk get down to one. Really, I mean, I could hope to draw Rafine to kill Minsk and Boo, but then I take eight this turn down to nine, and I have a Rafine in play, and that's it. I could hope to draw, oh, I can't draw Time Warp because I don't have the double blue. I think I just have to hope that I'm drawing Get Lost, so... 
or council's judge or now council judge is already gone all right well either way i'm gonna play wandering emperor if i draw get lost i can go get lost plus wrath what's the best way to what would i want the wandering emperor to have done then i guess is there any other outs because if i'm drawing exactly get lost if i'm like kind of counting on that then maybe i can just plus one this take eight yeah all right i'll take it and hope to draw exactly get lost oh brainstorm uh, i mean i guess I, I guess i'll keep trying sure and do i want to take a damage No, I really don't. That's fine. Wrath. Make a samurai. Pass the turn. If I had just drawn white plume, no, that still wouldn't have really done it. All right. Now mince can, can go up to a 4-4. Four, four. Boo, rather. And then attack my wandering emperor. Then I can hit Minskin Boo down to two and go to Fairy plus White Plume. All right, I guess that's or hit down to three. I guess if you use the plus one, yeah, I guess so. I'll just let the Wandering Emperor die here. Don't really have a much better line there. And if Anton has nothing else, three lands in hand, which is unlikely because I don't think he drew his red land until a little bit later, then maybe, maybe we can get out of this. I don't think we're going to, though. In fact, I, I think very much we're not. Okay. Let's draw. All right, let's start by attacking Minsk and Boo. see if I can get a block here I mean to fairy bouncing boo and white plume is not that bad the question is do I want to draw Jace or do I want to draw a random card I kind of feel like I want to draw a random card because I'm gonna get my second blue off white plume but it's not gonna be I just feel like Jace is not gonna do it so I don't know okay mince goes down to three White Plume, get an island, and I guess I actually don't even play a land here, most likely, because I don't want to lose my City of Traders. I, I had to play it last turn to save a point of damage, which which was a pretty costly thing, but that's where I'm at. Bounce Boo. Urza. All right, I mean... This is a good card. Minsk and Boo. I feel like almost every other card, like even like Broadside Bombardiers or any of those things, I could have like potentially beaten. And Minsk and Boo is just not it. All right. With a tireless tracker at him, I, am I hoping he has land or not land? I guess I'm hoping he has two lands in hand, plays a land, makes a clue, draws another land. Can make Boo large. I can double block it though. But I can't block all the things coming in. I mean, depending on how he attacks... Maybe I just, I just can't really imagine what combination of cards he could have in hand that would uh, allow me to win this game. But like I said, I've got to, got to keep trying. Let's see. What are you going to do? Oh, in other news, JJ's 0-2. Not good. Max 2-0. Great. So we're up 4-2 right now. It's going to be 4-3, and one of those guys just has to win one more. Hopefully JJ, because, you know, me and Mac already got two each. <laughs> All right, so these are coming in. Oh, well, I mean, it's a pretty easy block then. Snap that off. Trading for tracker. The bad news, it means he's got all spells in hand. Maybe they're all double red. But he gets to go get a land now, so I can't prevent that, though. Yeah, he's got a mountain. So he can't have a land in hand because he has tireless tracker and he didn't play a land. Uh, yeah, this game is completely unwinnable. How could this possibly not be? Okay. 
Five, so next turn Minsk and Boo minuses and I just die. That's cool. Uh, let's go land. Jace bounce and this chumps, I die. I guess I'm just gonna go Jace brainstorm. Hope to hit the nuts. I did not and uh, I am now two and one. All right. Good run. Let's see how my team's doing. Well, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> JJ did not get a match. What a beat, though. His last game, he ancestraled and didn't draw a land, plus his draw step. So after drawing four cards, had to discard three times. It was brutal. In any case, I think this deck turned out pretty good. I mean, there's a reason White Plume Adventure is such a powerful card that, in part because of the power level, wasn't in the cube for a while. But, yeah, welcome back, White Plume Adventure. You, you, you did what I thought you would. And... Uh, Otherwise, I mean, it's a three on three. People are pretty competitive for fixing and, and good card quality. So this deck ended up a little scattered, but I think it was a pretty good deck overall. And, uh, you know, if you're buying his deck in the last round, like that, that was not going to be an easy, easy game regardless. So that'll do it for this draft. No dub this time, but hopefully better luck next. As always, I appreciate you watching, hanging out as uh, I took an adventure with to the White Plume Mountain. And dog, see, the dog's just outrageous. Outrageous. In any case, you're not outrageous. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.